Remember that one of the conspirators, Lalit, who surrendered yesterday at a Delhi police station last night, is now being taken to a Delhi court. He surrendered along with his aide, Mahesh, who's also said to have had a big role in the planning of the security breach in parliament. Lalit was in fact staying with Mahesh soon after that attack took place, was given shelter in Rajasthan by Mahesh. After that, he made his way back to Delhi and surrendered. Now, the information that we have, of course, is that Lalit had, in a sense, conspired this entire attack. We don't know yet if he was being, uh, in fact, instructed by someone else, but he was making the essential plan. Let's cut across to a report by Himanshu. एक बार देख तो ले एक बार देख ले ललित है ललित है हाँ तो आप ये देख सकते हैं कि न्यू फ्रेंड्स कॉलोनी थाने से जो स्पेशल सेल का ऑफिस है यहाँ से ललित को लेकर के पुलिस की टीम निकली है पूछताछ के लिए जहाँ पर लाया गया था और उसके बाद से ललित को लेकर के ललित बीच में आप देख सकते हैं गाड़ी के बीच में ललित को बिठाया गया है ये आप देखिए जो बीच में शख्स बैठा है वो ललित झा है जिसने कल नई दिल्ली के थाने में जाकर के कर्तव्य पद थाने में सरेंडर कर दिया था जिनका है ललित झा जो कि मेन कॉन्स्पिरेटर बताया जा रहा है जो कुछ भी 13 दिसंबर को हुआ था आप देखिए इसे लेकर के पुलिस यहाँ से जगन मोहंती के Okay, so uh, we just played out for you that report by Himanshu Mishra, who's uh, shown us how Lalit, in a sea of security there being provided by the Delhi police, has made his is being taken to court right now. Just yesterday, all the other accused in this case were produced in court. They were amounted to seven days of police custody. In this case, too, the Delhi police were pushing for maximum security, uh, for maximum custody. I beg your pardon. Lalit was, uh, in fact, uh, he had surrendered before the Delhi police late last night after cops were hunting for him. His last known location was to be in Rajasthan, and it was there essentially uh, that you had a uh, uh, Lalit. staying with another accused in this case uh, an aide named as mahesh who also reportedly had planned the entire attack and the breach that took place both inside and outside parliament now uh, as we get you the latest updates we'll also connect with himanshu to get you the latest uh, on this himanshu is live with us now himanshu आपके जो रिपोर्ट था जिस जिसमें ललित को लेकर जा रहे हैं कोर्ट को वो हमने अभी प्ले किया था अभी हमको बताइए कि दिल्ली पुलिस क्या बोलेंगे कोर्ट में क्या उनको मैक्सिमम कस्टडी के लिए मांगेंगे देखिए पहले जो चार आरोपियों को पुलिस ने जब कोर्ट में पेश किया था कल गुरुवार के दिन तो पुलिस ने पंद्रह दिन की रिमांड की मांग की थी क्योंकि यूएपीए लगा है तो ऐसे मामले में तीस दिन की रिमांड पुलिस को मिल सकती है कोई लेकिन कोर्ट ने सिर्फ सात दिन की रिमांड दी हालांकि पुलिस का यह कहना था कि उन्हें मुंबई लेके जाना है उन्हें बेंगलोर ले जाना है लखनऊ लेके जाना है कई जगह पुलिस ने बताई थी लेकिन उसके बावजूद सात दिन का रिमांड पुलिस को मिला था अब पुलिस जब आज ललित झा को पेश करेगी तो जाहिर तौर पर एक तो जो सबसे बड़ी चीज है कि ललित झा जब मोबाइल लेकर के भागा तो उसने मोबाइल कहां कहां पर उसने डिस्ट्रॉय किए ये समझना क्योंकि उसके पास सारे फोन थे तो सबसे बड़ा तो जो पॉइंट आ रहा है सामने वो ये आ रहा है दूसरी चीज लखनऊ में जो जूते बनवाए गए थे उन जूतों में कैविटी बनवाई गई थी एक्स्ट्रा रबर के सोल लगवाए गए थे उन स्पोर्ट्स के शूज में और उस सोल के अंदर कैविटी बना के उसके अंदर जो वो कैनिस्टर था कलर कैनिस्टर उनको उसके अंदर छिपाया गया था तो ये कहा बना था ये प्लानिंग किसकी थी ये सारी रिसर्च किसने किया था ये सारी चीजें अब ललित बेहद हेल्पफुल होगा अब चूंकि देखिए इसमें जो महत्वपूर्ण सुराग था जिसपे मोबाइल पे पुलिस को बहुत यकीन था वो अभी फिलहाल पुलिस के हाथ में नहीं लगा है तो ऐसे में सरकमस्टेंशियल एविडेंसेस लोगों से बातचीत जो आ, इनके घरों से जो जानकारी मिली है उसके आधार पर अब पुलिस इन्वेस्टिगेशन को आगे बढ़ाएगी जी अक्षिता All right, Himanshu, stay on with us uh, as Himanshu gets us the details, really, of the different aspects 
that the investigation and uh, the police will look into. Uh, it will, of course, uh, we, we'll have to wait and watch to see uh, whether Lalit is remanded to further custody. In all likelihood, he will be. He's just surrendered. And obviously, the police will have to interrogate him further to get details of how he plotted and why, importantly, he plotted this kind of a security breach. But let me round up for you all the updates also uh, that are coming in right now. What you see on your screens is the diary of uh, Sagar, the accused Sagar Sharma and his 2015 diary, which mentioned thoughts on revolution. It had patriotic poems also in it. The same diary in 2021 mentioned how he had rage in him that he didn't know what to do with. The lines are from a passage that he wrote in his diary years ago. In a key in key conspirator Lalitja's interrogation, meanwhile, explosive revelations have also come to the fore. Sources say no phones were recovered from Lalit since he had destroyed all of them in Rajasthan on the morning of December 14th. Uh, because Lalit didn't just have his phone, he had all the other accused's phones. So none of their phones are right now with the police. He destroyed all of them in Rajasthan on the morning of December 14th, the day after the security breach happened. Lalit fled to Rajasthan as he figured the police were furiously on the hunt for him. It was there that he met his friend Mahesh, who gave him shelter for the night. Police say he's one of the key conspirators in plotting the parliament breach. He was in touch with Neelam and had plans to uh, come to Delhi with Lalit from Rajasthan, but changed the plan towards the end. So Mahesh also is very much an accused. Let's get you a report uh, by India Today where we visited uh, intruder Sagar's house from where this secret diary was recovered. Sagar Sarma, I am standing on a house. You can see a normal house. और अभी ताला लगा चुकी अंदर हैं लोग लेकिन एक खुलासा हुआ है कि वह जब बैंगलोर आता जाता था तब फ्लाइट से वह दूरी तय करता था आखिर क्या वजह थी कि फ्लाइट्स के टिकट उसके पास मौजूद थे वो कहां से आए थे पुलिस इस दिशा में भी तफ्तीश कर रही है क्योंकि इंटेलिजेंस को जो इनपुट मिले हैं उसमें जानकारी मिली है पूछताछ में और घर वालों ने भी इस बारे में जिक्र किया है कि जब फ्लाइट्स के टिकट्स सागर के पास आए तो उससे पूछताछ भी की गई कि आखिर तुम्हारे पास इतना पैसा कहां से आया है इसके बावजूद भी वह उसने कुछ नहीं बताया लेकिन ये तो साफ हो गया है कि जब वह बैंगलोर में नौकरी कर रहा था उस दौरान जब वह लखनऊ आता था तो उस दौरान फ्लाइट से आया तो आखिर ये फ्लाइट्स के टिकट किसने अरेंज किए कहाँ से आया किस तरीके से आए इस दिशा में भी इंटेलिजेंस और पुलिस तफ्तीश कर रही है क्योंकि साफ है कि अगर फ्लाइट से वो आ रहा है इसके पीछे कोई ना कोई बड़ा राज जरूर है जिसको छुपाया गया है जो सिर्फ सागर ही जानता है हालांकि उसने इस बात का जिक्र अपने घर वालों से नहीं किया और ना ही बताया कि वो कहां से अरेंज किया गया है and we've also tracked down the Kolkata residence of Lalit Jha. He stayed here as a tenant along with uh, his parents and his brother. Allegedly the mastermind of the parliament security breach. There are a number of aspects of Lalit's story and the allegations against him that quite simply don't add up. Which is why there are questions about whether he was being funded, directed or instructed by someone somewhere else. And whether there was another motive that's yet to be discovered. That is the Kolkata residence of Lalit Jha, who has been identified as one of the mastermind in parliament at a case. Right now, you are present at Bagui Hati area in Kolkata, and Lalit Jha used to stay uh, at this flat. Uh, at this flat as a tenant and not only Lalit rather uh, he used to uh, live at this flat along with his family along with uh, his uh, parent and brother uh, they used to live at this flat since last three to four years as a tenant and uh, the locals are claiming that Lalit uh, has introduced the, uh, himself as private tutor as a private tutor as a school teacher to them and all of these local local residents used to know Lalit as a master G at this area because he introduced himself as a private tutor and local uh, school teacher. So let's get you all the details that we know right now about how Lalit hatched this plan. What exactly did he do to ensure that all these people from different parts of the country came together to pull off this plan? He had a plan A and a plan B. Let's run you through those. Plan A was for passes to be issued to Sagar Sharma and Manoranjan. And with those passes, they'd go in and carry out the security breach. Amol and Neelam would stay outside parliament and they'd set off those color cans outside. This was plan A and this is what was followed. This is what we saw play out 48 hours ago in parliament. What was plan B? 
So, in fact, Lalit ensured that if things go wrong, there are plan B also in place. In which case, if Amul and Neelam failed outside parliament, then Mahesh would take the next step. The aide who surrendered along with Lalit, that he too would step in and storm parliament. Now, Mahesh was in fact originally to be planted outside parliament, but he didn't make it for some reason which the cops are yet to identify, which is why they didn't know that he was also involved in the planning. The reason that my, uh, they went to plan A was because Mahesh didn't turn up. He stayed back in Rajasthan, so he wasn't in Delhi when the incident actually took place. But this gives you a sense of how Lalit, who some are calling the mastermind but we're referring to as a conspirator because we don't know whether he was being instructed by someone above to go ahead and carry out this kind of an attack had thought this out and planned this to the T keeping a plan A and a plan B in mind. Himanshu is joining us with more details on this. Himanshu ab tak jahan hum lalit ke baare mein agar hum baat kare to ab tak uske kya kuch links samne aaye hai kuch previous criminal record tha नहीं देखिए अभी तक पुलिस को किसी क्रिमिनल रिकॉर्ड की कोई जानकारी नहीं मिली है लेकिन आ, पुलिस लगातार वेरीफाई कर रही है लगातार जांच कर रही है क्योंकि देखिए जो शख्स जिसको इसने वीडियो आखिरी में भेजा था उसका कहना है कि ये करता क्या था अर्निंग के सोर्स क्या थे ये कभी स्पष्ट नहीं हो पाया फैमिली में कितने लोग थे कोलकाता में जिस जगह पे ये रहता था वहां पर भी ताला बनता तो बेसिकली ये बिहार दरभंगा का रहने वाला था लेकिन इसकी मूवमेंट कहां कहां पर थी ये स्पष्ट नहीं था अब जाहिर तौर पे कि जब अब ये पुलिस के सामने इसने खुद कल सरेंडर किया है और पुलिस अब इससे पूछताछ करेगी कोर्ट में पेश करने के बाद रिमांड पे लेगी तो आगे कई सारी जो चीजें हैं वो साफ हो सकेंगी जो जिस तरीके की बातें जब हमने देखा कि पकड़े गए थे मौके से चार लोग तेरह दिसंबर को तो कहा गया था कि एक जो पहली बात आई थी निकल करके कि जॉब नहीं है इसलिए परेशान है लेकिन पुलिस ने इसको वेरीफाई किया और इस चीज को लेकर पुलिस संशय में कि क्या यही मोटिव है क्योंकि मोटिव क्लियर नहीं हो पा रहा अभी तक क्योंकि पुलिस को इस मोटिव पर बिलीव नहीं हो रहा अब तक की जो इन्वेस्टिगेशन हुई है दूसरी चीज अगर यही मोटिव था तो फोन को ले जा करके आखिर ललित ने डिस्ट्रॉय क्यों कर दिया आखिर ऐसा उस फोन के अंदर क्या था जिस जो वो नहीं चाहता था कि पुलिस के हथे ये सारे फोन लगे तो क्या कुछ ऐसी चीजें थी जो पुलिस से छिपा जो एजेंसी हर किसी से छिपाने की कोशिश थी जाहिर तौर पर जो कुछ ये छिपाने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं वही पुलिस को पता लगाना है ये कॉन्स्पिरेसी कितनी डीप थी क्या ललित ही वो फाइनल चक था जिसने पूरी साजिश रची या इसके पीछे से कोई और है जो ये पूरे के पूरे निर्देश दे रहा था जिसने इतनी लंबी साजिश रची क्योंकि आप देखिए रेकी करना रेकी करने के बाद तेरह दिसंबर के दिन स्पेसिफिक उस दिन जिस दिन 22 साल पहले अटैक हुआ था उस दिन सेध मारी कर देना सिक्योरिटी में वो भी नई बिल्डिंग के पार्लियामेंट में अपने आप में बेहद चौंकाने वाली बात है तो रेकी करके ये सारा कुछ कर लेना ये बड़ी बात है और यही वजह है कि पुलिस ने यू की तहत एफ दर्ज की है ताकि अगर कोई साजिश है तो हर एक चीज वो सामने आ जाए There are several questions that remain unanswered, as Himanshu uh, just told you right now, including the big one of why Lalit fled from Delhi to Rajasthan, got rid of the phones, destroyed all of them, then came back and surrendered in Delhi. Let me just run you through what Lalit Jha was doing for the last 48 hours. After carrying out that attack in parliament, and he was there outside parliament recording the whole thing on his phone, uh, he had in fact just before that, met all of the accused. They were put up in Gurugram in accused Vicky's residence. So Lalit also was very much there. Now, after that meeting took place, all of the roles were clearly set up. It was established what each person would have to do. He was there standing outside parliament. And what was his role? Lalit had all the phones with him of Amul, Neelam, Sagar and Manoranjan. He was also videographing the parliament breach. He was standing outside parliament. He shot the video of Amul and Neelam doing what they did of setting off those colors bombs. Now, after he videographed that, he was, of course, at that point in the heart of the national capital. He managed to flee to Rajasthan. And in Rajasthan, he was staying at Mahesh's residence, who is now also in the custody of the Delhi police. It was here in Rajasthan that he actually destroyed all the phones of his co-accused and his own. So that evidence 
is completely gone now, wiped out. And that's where the big question lies. Why did Lalit do that if the motive is as simple as it seems of them feeling uh, that, you know, issues that they wanted uh, should be raised, they felt like revolutionaries of sorts. If that was really the case, why did he go ahead and take all the trouble of going to Rajasthan, destroying phones, coming back to Delhi and surrendering at a police station? He surrendered late last night, even as, of course, there was a massive manhunt for him. So this particular uh, fact that Lalit had planned out this entire bit for the last 48 hours of going to Rajasthan and coming back is what's led to a lot of questions about the motive of what exactly his plans are. So his questioning is going to be crucial in this particular case. But let me tell you about how the planning was done for this parliament breach. It wasn't something that happened at the spur of the moment. You had people coming in from different parts of the country, everyone united on social media, and they planned almost for two years to actually pull off this kind of a security breach. Social media was used for recruitment for two years, with, in fact, the first profile activated in October 2021 in the name of Deshbhakt 88, which you see there on your screens. There were rampant action call posts on Instagram just to gather people of the same mindset. Sagar Sharma, the one who got the parliament passed, was one of the initial people who actually created the group. Bhagat Singh's ideology was used to connect people with Lalit and Mahesh, later joining the group as well. It was called Bhagat Singh Fan Club. It was a WhatsApp group. And that's where they exchanged all messages, planned everything to the T. The plan actually was to hire more than five people to breach parliament, to do it as a big group. But they later stuck to sending four people, two inside and two outside. Reverence for Bhagat Singh, opposition to populism and respect for martyrs appear to be the common driving factors among the accused as per an analysis of the online footprints of these accused. It, this has been, uh, in fact, done by India Today's open source intelligence team. A scroll through one of the accused, let's take Neelam, for example. Her social media pages establishes her as a social activist and a staunch follower of Dr. B.R. Ambedkar. She's been part of several other protests as well. Lalit Jha, who shot that video of Neelam and Amul's arrest and collected others' mobile phones before fleeing the scene, expresses displeasure over BJP's populist policies and promoting thoughts of Subhash Chandra Bose, uh, Fidel Castro and Chandrasekhar Azad. Interestingly, he equally admires Swami Vivekananda and J. Krishnamurti. So there are questions about, you know, which side was he leaning towards, what was his ideology. It's all very confusing if you look at this social media footprint. Now let's talk about the third accused. Amol Shinde, a sports enthusiast, he wears his love for Bhagat Singh, flaunting portraits of the ideologue on his T-shirt and bike with messages like salute to the martyrdom of our heroes on his Instagram profile. Uh, Sagar Sharma, one of the two apprehended from inside Lok Sabha, describes himself as a silent volcano uh, and says, uh, if you read his bio, it says, simple living and high thinking, writer, poet, philosopher, actor, thinker and artist. A look at the online activity suggests that Neelam, Amol, Lalit and Sagar had been in constant touch. They frequently even tagged each other in photos.